Changes in weather patterns have caused unpredictable rainy seasons, leading to either floods or severe drought. This in turn has affected the state of food security, hence low crop production and food production from farms. In Kenya, farmers are being sensitized on climate-smart agriculture to counter inadequate water challenges during food production. With irrigation, farmers can ensure they have a consistent production of food on their farms. On today's Climate Smart Agriculture show, we visit Egerton University, one of the higher level institutions which trains on agriculture. At their Climate and Water Smart Agricultural Center, they aim to sensitize farmers around Nakuru and Eldoret counties on proper irrigation practices and water harvesting methods. The irrigation platform is a partnership of various stakeholders made up of academia, private sector, uh, government, and also farmers. So we come together and we discuss about matters irrigation. How can we conserve and use water efficiently in Akuru County? So as a result of our deliberations, we realized that we needed to set up a demo center at Edgerton alongside the demo centers that we had set in farmers' uh, farms. We are doing several things. One is uh, we are encouraging the use of efficient drip irrigation systems uh, compared to sprinkler. We are also encouraging water conservation. So we have two water pans uh, that are tapping water from runoff and we are using this water for irrigation. So we pump it up to the tanks and it flows with gravity. We, so we are comparing different irrigation systems. So we have drip, we have mist, we have sprinkler, and of course the hand watering, which is the least efficient of all. Eh? Uh, we are also encouraging other partners that may have technology to come and partner with us so that we can be able to uh, demonstrate their technology. We are also training students on the practices themselves. So practices like mulching, uh, um, the zypits, or adaptations of the zypes, the basin, you know, uh, where water can be retained within the plant basin. Uh, these are some of the technologies that uh, we are using. So any technology that will help us uh, reduce uh, water loss within the, the university. So we've started here, but we hope to be able to extend beyond here. Irrigation on potatoes is part of their project demonstration. This will aid in providing enough water to the potatoes to avoid overwatering for maximum production. We are aiming to use this center for student and farmer training. So fourth year students can come and do their experiments here. We also have farmer trials, we call it community engaged uh, learning. So the farmers come and do the experiment together with us. Consumption of potatoes is increasing in Kenya, especially in the urban areas, while production at farm levels is low. This is attributed by potato farmers using recycled potato seeds or regeneration from their first seeds, which they term as clean seeds. With this in mind, many certified seed potato farmers are generating seedlings to supply to farmers. Professor Anthony Kibe is a lecturer by profession at Egerton University at the Department of Crop Production. He trains undergraduates and postgraduates on good crop production process for a better farming future. I do train uh, undergraduate uh, students as well as postgraduate students. Uh, I, I do guide them in various aspects of crop production issues of cropping systems uh, that are found in Kenya in the world as well as in dryland farming. I also teach them about the principles of uh, crop production uh, with respect to agronomy, agronomic crops. Professor Kibe has been working with the institution for 20 years. In his teaching career, he did research and realized there is a gap on potato production, especially in seedling distribution. He did research on rapid potato propagation to boost potato production, especially to smallholder farmers. This is with regard to uh, enhancing access to high quality seed potato amongst the small scale 
uh, farmers, trying to interest farmers in seed production because seed uh, is one of the biggest constraints uh, in the area of uh, potato production. Only about 2.5% of all farmers in Kenya uh, grow certified seed, meaning that the balance 97 or so percent, they actually get seeds from either their neighbors or they buy seeds that are from a place that is unknown. And they tend to harbor certain pests um, and there are also diseases uh, which uh, reduce the yields. Research has shown that if we can be able to uh, help the farmers access high quality, uh, disease free, pest free uh, seed material that is certified, uh, then we can even be able to double or even triple our potato yields. Um, currently, Kenya um, is one of the few African countries that has a good environment uh, for growing potatoes. Potatoes, as you may know, tend to have originated from the temperate world, so they require cool temperatures. And because of our highland regions, uh, Kenya is known to be a high potential potato producing country. So there has been a lot of interest to support that, even from the European countries especially the Dutch, who are even importing uh, tubers uh, for selling to our farmers. Potato is the second most important crop in Kenya after maize in terms of consumption. It is grown by approximately 500,000 small-scale farmers on 120,000 hectares and with an average yield of 7.7 .7 tons per hectare. Productivity in Kenya is about 9.8 tons per hectare against a potential of uh, up to even 30 tons per hectare. So you find that uh, we are producing at a third of our potential. And it's largely, of course, to seed problems and, of course, uh, issues of just crop husbandry, issues of nutrition, and, of course, uh, uh, you know, matching the seed to the agroecological zone. Uh, so in this particular area, we're only trying to develop the seed. Tissue culture permits a very rapid propagation. Under traditional propagation, one tuber yields approximately eight daughter tubers in one growing season. While with tissue culture, 100,000 identical plantlets can be produced in eight months that when transferred to the field and could produce 50 metric tons of potatoes. Professor Kibe uses hydroponics farming method to grow apical potato cuttings from the lab using soilless medium, which is free from soil bone diseases and healthy seedling propagation. The conventional method of seed production uh, requires about four and a half years for one to move from the breeder seed, you know, pre-basic, basic seed, uh, to certified one and certified two uh, seed, which is now uh, grown to produce the wear, wear potato. Um, but you find that many farmers, after they buy the certified two, they still use the next generation a seed, and then the next one, they, and then they grow on the same piece of land. So what we are trying to tell them is, we can still help you, and even some of you can get into the business of uh, multiplying or bulking this seed. So the, this method where we use the hydroponics as you're seeing here, um, hydroponics is simply growing crops on soilless culture. So what you see here, is actually what you call a cocoa pit. It is able to hold moisture, so it has a relatively, uh, I mean, a water holding capacity that can provide water for the rooted, apical rooted cuttings, or even for tubers that you can also plant in them. And below that, we have uh, the pumice. Pumice, as you see, um, is also. This we are getting it from Naivasha. Uh, these are from the, of course, the volcanic 
uh, rock material, but it's the same one that we have we have here on the ground. Of course, the bacteria and the fungi cannot grow, cannot grow on them, so they are relatively inert, and that's why they they become good for growing uh, the apical rooted cuttings or even the mini tubers. So we mix we mix uh, these two because when we we started with the with the pumice, we found that it is highly porous. So we were having to irrigate a lot of times, and so, of course, there you use a lot of power in pumping water. But uh, we are following what we've been advised by the ADC, where they combine at the ratio of one is to one, uh, whereby now the cocoa pit, which is a bit expensive, uh, is able to hold water for a longer time, and therefore the plant doesn't dry. You can plant these at a spacing of about 20, like these are the drips. So you can come here and plant that in there. Come here again. Plant these there. Come here again. Plant that there. Like this is now one is one of the epical rooted cuttings, which was planted when we were inaugurating the the climate and the water smart agriculture center. And you can see it is already. It has rooted and it's growing. And the drips, next to the drips. And we tend to grow this very near because uh, we don't want the tubers to become big. We don't want the tubers to become big. So we, we kind of grow them near, near each other in a zigzag manner so that when those tubers, uh, they kind of are concentrated in one place, they, they don't become enlarged because we don't want too, too big, uh, or two tubers. Professor Kiba shares with us why he opted to use soilless medium instead of treating the farmyard soil for rapid seed propagation. It's expensive. You know, you'll have to sterilize it. I mean, and then it's bulky. How will you cut this soil and put it in an autoclave? I mean, uh, if you look at the field conditions, these are tons and tons of of, a, of, of soil. So sterilizing is not that simple or is it, it's not also cheap. Um, so the soilless one, as I said, it's, these materials are inert in that they would not be able to host the bacteria and the fungi. So they tend to be, uh, to help in keeping away any infestation. After growing the potato plantlets produced by rapid propagation at the lab. Uh, such mini tubers you'd be able to, to obtain from this. You can get as many as eight from one particular cutting. Um, then this actually is true to type. It is breeder's material. So when you take this now, you can take it to the farm and then you can multiply it again. So you can again get as many as as another set of eight, but again it varies from varieties to varieties. When we grew them there with the farmers, uh, we were able to see even some were giving us as many as 15 to minimize uh, the generations. Uh, you only go through three generations, that is in the lab, in the hydroponics, and one more in the field, and you are able to get as many as 2,100 tubers from one plant. We're taking a short commercial break, but we'll be back with more.